all of my good days outweigh my bad days and I I won't complain hey everybody lady Cheryl here and what's your name Bria and we're going to make a video today and I want all of you all to know that I'm going to share with you some fruit trees in my food forest I thin the fruit out and let me show you which ones I thin the fruit out and which ones I don't and also I'm going to share with you a few updates around the food forest and I hope I inspire you okay let's get started Bria what you gonna say you dancing do you see those nectarines and peaches on the ground we go in closer you can see it several right there this is why I no longer thin my fruit trees of fruit I used to do it because that's what we were taught okay it was three pieces of fruit right there several pieces of fruit used to be right in here you see that fruit our winds are so high and you can see the leaves moving on the tree that the fruit just thins itself so about a couple years ago i thinned the fruit out and then all of a sudden i noticed a lot of fruit was down on the ground i stopped doing it so those general rules about thinning fruit on your trees to make other pieces get bigger you know they say don't let more than one be close together I'm telling you guys, sometimes you have to improvise for your weather conditions. Because look at, you can feel this wind. Can't you feel it? You can see and visualize how windy it is. And we're going to um, get rain today, thunderstorms with wind gusts as strong as 40, 45 miles an hour. So I don't thin my fruit off of my fruit trees anymore. Mother Nature takes care of it for me. If I wish to thin all the fruit off of these trees, I wouldn't have any. Okay? So take into consideration your weather issues when you start thinning your fruit. Well, it's pretty. I can't wait for those to get right. Right here, you can see even more nectarines um, that have fallen from this tree. But it's okay. Like I said earlier, you can't count your chickens before they hatch. This is my Yates persimmon. It's an American persimmon, meaning that it'll be real astringent if you don't let it get a uh, freeze or 32 degree temperature or lower. Um, you have to wait because you can't eat this fruit at any time. You have to wait. I don't see any fruit on it yet. I'm really impressed. This tree looks really good. It was a really skinny switch about this big and this tall. About a couple feet off the ground when I first got it. So it has really grown a lot. I'm looking at a wasp go in there, but I don't see any fruit yet. I'll let you know when I get some fruit. Fuyu persimmon, a lot of fruit. I mentioned this a few weeks ago. It has a lot of fruit on this tree. It's my favorite tree in the food forest. Uh, it dropped a lot of fruit. Uh, Fuyu persimmons, persimmons period, are known for dropping fruit if they can't handle it. You see those little round discs? That dropped off all down here. They're turning brown or whatever. All of this was on a tree. But you can see it's still loaded. This is what the fruit looks like when it starts. I didn't thin the fruit out on this apple tree because it hasn't produced a lot of fruit. It's taking its time. They're, the apple trees are the slowest trees to leaf out and produce fruit. So it doesn't have a lot of fruit on it. And this one is still taking its time leafing out. And you can see it's coming to life. You can see right there at the top and even here there's a lot of fruiting buds so i'll bring 
these back to you in another video soon where I have them in this raised bed and let you know their progress. But they're taking their time. I looked back to my journal. They were all leafed out by the third week in May. So I think they're going to take off now after we get all of that rain. Right. Also in this bed is a um, plum tree. I'll insert it. We've been eating these plums. I caught a worm in one of them the other day. You have to be careful. So I'm gonna start taking them off when they get almost ripe so that um, squirrels and worms, squirrels and worms and insects don't get them. Well, we still have a few uh, pieces of fruit still here on here. This is one of my methylene plum trees. I'm gonna pan up and let you see it real tall fruit on the tree and you guys know that I spray regularly if you've been with me for a while those of you that are new to my channel I spray with the organic uh, spray that kills insects check this out look at that worm inside of my right worm see it moving so you have to really stay in guard and protect your fruit trees by regular spraying and then removing the fruit as soon as it gets ripe, because they'll find a way. Look at that nasty worm. I'm getting ready to do what I always do, relocate it to that big house in the sky. <laughs> we haven't lost too many fruit, too many pieces of fruit. Here's an apple tree in the ground. I'm not going to thin any of the fruit. It doesn't have a lot of fruit on it, uh, but I've seen some, for example, right here and here, and there are more coming on. Like I said, here's some here. Okay, I think I see an ant. So th there's ants, then there may be aphids. Little aphid eggs. I'm just wipe them off right now. It's gonna rain. This video will serve as documentation. I'll go back and check this in between the rain. Here's a piece of fruit here. So it's a little fruit on here. Not a whole lot. Okay, and then see that's apple tree there. And then there's an apple tree right here. My little sitting area. And you can see a few pieces of fruit on it. It's real sparse, so there's no need to prune anything here. This could be some damage, wind damage or whatever. And then the last apple tree is right here. It had a lot of blight. You can see some damage portion. Let me show you closer. I don't know if that was wind damage or what, but I'll take care of it. But this is the one that was really damaged with some Pardon me, fire blight, and I just pruned it down real, real short. Now, I had to move my fruit trees over toward the center of this aisle here, this pathway, because they were blocking out all of the sun, reaching my humongous tomato plants. So I'm gonna have to go in here and cut the branches off at the bottom let me go in closer so you can see right there at the bottom there. See some yellowing or brown leaves? I gotta get some air circulating in there. So I'll do that tomorrow and I'll show you that later. But what I wanna show you now is how few Meyer lemons I have on this tree. It was over a hundred. So don't count your chickens before they hatch. A lot of it would drop. Some of, some of it because the fruit tree can't handle it. And some of it will drop because of the wind. So I just wanted to share my citrus trees with you. Um, the one that is doing the best so far to hold it onto the fruit is the grapefruit tree. It's got a lot of fruit on it. I'm not counting it all until a couple more months when I can see that it's fully going to develop. Mm -hmm. 
We moved the citrus trees over. We put more fresh cardboard down here to suppress weeds. And we put mulch. They had to leave. The dad picked them up. We had to get a chance to spread some more mulch right in here where we have cardboard. I'm going to try to do it a little bit later or in between the days that it's not raining. But this is really cool because this allows me to get in over there where I was showing you that the tomato plants have, have overgrown. Hopefully I'll get a chance to work on this area here, pulling up some of the tomato um, branches, tying them to the stakes, even putting more stakes in here if I have to. Uh, but now I'm gonna move this uh, tree here on the crate. This is my pink lady apple tree. And now I'll be able to walk down here and make a pathway right in here okay hopefully i can get it done brian started spraying some mulch down there i think he broke some of the branches up my tomato plant but that's okay i'm gonna do some really excessive pruning and i'll bring that into a video when i clear that brian up. and bria helped me clean up some of the area up under this jujube tree and um, elderberry that's right next to it, and we spread some mulch. I'm gonna show you another area that we worked on. Okay, okay? I'm in the greenhouse, and as you can see here, I took that humongous beast of a tomato plant, that basket mushroom, it's all right in here. Unfortunately, they had to go someplace and we didn't get this trash up yet, but I'm getting ready to pick up all of this and get it into the uh, compost. Okay, just want to show you a before, or at least have documentation. I may not put this in a video. I may do a separate one and let you see what I'm going to put into this garden space. I think I'm going to put okra. Let's talk about the figs. I don't usually remove any of the figs. I just let them do their thing. I'm going closer so you can see that it's plenty of figs in here. I have it growing like a hedge doing real beautiful i'll show you the other one on the other side but check out down here this is why they're growing so well because i let all that air get in here okay let's check out the other fig tree well yeah let's check out the other fig tree fig trees has really grown yeah they're really grown a lot and guys this is the uh fig tree uh close to the prayer garden and brie is showing you all the figs the figs are my favorite. Yeah, this I think thing. I this I told them earlier um, before you got here that the fig trees, um, the, the grandkids really love all of the figs. I can see the mm -hmm. This is the first leaf of a banana plant. Usually after you winterize them, I cut these off and then the new leaves is what I just allowed to get um, bigger. But getting back to the fig trees, um, the second one is the more vigorous ones. We get more vigorous out of the two tree. Yeah, little lizard. We get excited when we see stuff like that because they're eating little bugs and insects on the fig tree and we don't have to worry about it. We don't really get too many insects on the fig tree. We have squirrels and birds that will pick on the fruit, you know, and or eat the fruit, but we don't really get any bad insect damage, but we ha have, um, uh, powdery mildew this time of the year, but so far we haven't gotten any of that. Um, and I, I know it is because of the way that I'm growing the figs like a hedge. Uh, it gets more air. Okay. All right. My elderberries flowers are opening up. They're going to be a beautiful bloom. I'll show it to you. Uh, I'll insert a picture all up there i sent a lot of elderberry cuttings out so a lot of you will be able to make your tonics and your syrup and you can make champagne out of these white flowers after they get to the flowering stage over here let me show you an update on the jujubes that are being pollinated by wasp and bees, we should get a lot of them this year, more than last year, and we had quite a lot last year. Okay, I have four pear trees on my property. 
and this is the one right here I'm going to talk about. Okay, and let me show you that I have one right here. And then I have two in front of the greenhouse that I share all the time. The exception to the rule about thinning fruit trees is you can thin the fruit on the pear tree. Now, this is the first year that this pear tree uh, has put on some fruit. It's a, I can't remember, I'll insert it. It's on a dwarf root stock. Pear trees have real strong, tough branches. Okay, you can see that one is not going to make it. Let me go back down. I think I'm going too close in. Yeah. But where there are a lot of pears together, like right here, you see a cluster of four. I'm going to take that one and this small one. I hope I'm getting that on the camera. This one right there, and I'll just leave those two. Because they can hold on. Uh, because of the, 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 the way God made the, the tree so strong in the branches and the stems of the fruit. So you see, I just removed one over there. If it's looking real small, and see, you know, I got like four growing here. They're all about the same size. This one died. So I'm just going to leave those there. Here, you can clearly see that these two are struggling. I'm going to take those but well, this one is dead anyway can you see that yeah and this one is real small so i'm gonna take him out and i'll just leave her right there and you see where the wind either destroyed these two or the tree couldn't handle it these are on two different branches so i'll leave them and let's go over and look right here the weakest link is dying anyway. So I took it out. Over here, I'm going to take this one out. There's only one over there. There's several here. I'm going to remove this one. It was so easy. And this one, I didn't even have to cut it. And this one is a little stronger, so I'll leave it on. I'll leave these two on. Now, I'm going to show you. You remember, I told you this tree suffered from blight. This is an indication that it still has some of that disorder, but it's fighting through. Because I had to really prune this tree a lot. Uh to try to uh, get it to recover from the blight from having too much nitrogen. You can see right here where I cut it off. See that? Let me move these branches out the way so you can see where the top of my finger is, that darkening space right there. I had to cut that tree down. All of this was cut down to that height, but it has grown some more from the bottom. Here's a little small uh, pear. Pinch that off. I'll come back uh, when I finish the video and take some more of that off. But until then, I'm putting this, these leaves in my pocket. Okay. So let's go around the other side. Looks pretty good. I'm going to leave those three there. If one starts shriveling up, I'll take it out later. Okay. Okay, guys, right here, I want to show you the beautiful flowers on the vine of my chicory, my Italian dandelion that's growing in this container right here it's going to seed i showed you when it had one or two flowers on it but now look at here where i had uh weaved the vines through this tall trellis now let's go over to the other side and let you see how pretty and plentiful the flowers are going to be isn't that cool if you look real close that's where the seeds are going to be right in the center of those flowers. I am so excited. And I will pass this on to those of you that are in my Grow Your Own Food group and you get seeds once a month or any of my groups, my Perk Club groups. I'm going to be collecting these seeds and sending them to you. Okay, guys, it is Friday morning. It's a few days after I harvested 
my onions and you can see that I removed all the onions that were leaning and the ones that are still here are the ones that I did succession planting on and it's real windy and they're not leaning over so we can let them continue to grow a little bit longer and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill in all the holes the spaces where the onions were fill it up with some potting mix make sure I get all the weeds out if I see any and then I'll water it real good now here are the onions right here and I'm going to they've been drying in you know in this spot for two days and I left the dirt on them and now I'm gonna go and cut the tops off the, the onion skates and I will use them in uh, a spray for my repellent because most insects don't like the smell of onions and then I'll show you the exact amount of the onions uh, that I harvested and keep in mind it's only me and I don't eat a lot of onions so I don't grow a lot of onions like I used to when I had a family. So now the strawberries can breathe again and once the temperatures drop again they'll start producing again okay i'll be back and i'll show you the onions okay so this is my onion harvest i have some big ones i think that's the biggest one i have some small ones i don't know what you all but I, it seems like everything that i grow that is red grows a little bit smaller like red cabbage uh red mustard greens they always a little smaller but these are short day onions they're short day texas onions from dixondale farm so there's some big ones and then there's some little ones but this is enough that to last me a whole year when my husband was alive and my children were young i would grow probably 10 times this much and i would save the the green onion skates and chop them up and put them in the freezer. You do not have to blanch onions or sweet peppers for that matter when you freeze them. Um, but since, you know, it's just me, I'm gonna take these onion skates, I'm gonna put them in a five gallon bucket with a brick on top of them to keep them down. And it's gonna rain a lot, it's supposed to tonight. And then it'll fill up with rain water and then I'll put a top on it and I'll let it ferment a couple of weeks. And then I will add some crushed red peppers and any garlic that I have in the freezer. I'll go ahead and take that out tonight and put it in there. And then I'll strain this really well and make an insect repellent that I would use, especially here on my butternut squash. Even though I'm going to inject the stems with BT in a couple of weeks, I still will put that uh, uh, insect repellent uh, to keep, you know, the malts and everything away from them. Okay? So, yeah. You can plant your onions with your strawberries. I didn't have one slug on my strawberries this year. I got all of my strawberries since I downsized and put them elevated up on those uh, beds that I was telling you guys that I made out of the grow boxes. But when I had them on the ground, I always got a lot of slugs and I had to put my slug juice and that's another video I'll leave in the description box for those of you that are growing strawberries on the ground. I find that they do better uh, in raised beds, elevated raised beds. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video and you hopefully have been inspired or motivated to try some of the techniques that I shared with you in this video. Take care, everybody. You know that God loves you and I love you too. Bye now. Bria and I are getting this order ready so that we can ship it. And we always take pride in our orders. Right, Bria? Yes. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching.